so we're now back at our new shop and we have a few things going on here that uh, you'll get exposed to over the, uh, the preceding weeks. One, we're still moving in, though everything is here. Um, nothing's really put away or organized just yet. Um, uh, and we have new players here. We have uh, some new uh, individuals that you'll have an opportunity to meet later. Really cool guys that uh, have the passion to do this kind of work. Um, but we're also finally back on this project. This is uh, probably one of our number one questions, I would think, that people ask about what's the status of the GTA replica. Now, if we were going for a car that was essentially, literally, a traditional GTA replica, obviously we wouldn't have uh, wheels like this and things like that on it. But what we're really doing is we're actually focusing on a build that is meeting the customer's expectations. What he's always wanted, he's always been an advocate for, a car that was one, uh, fulfilled his obligations or his needs, which in this case was something that was comfortable to drive, that you could drive every day, that was reliable and quick, um, but also something that kind of suited his vision. Um, and this car kind of does that. Now, one of the things he wanted to do in this car um, that, uh, is a little bit outside the normal thinking was he wanted this car to be comfortable to drive in the summer. This car is going to live its life in the central California or northern California environment which gets really really hot so um, he wanted air conditioning. Now before you guys start flipping your wigs and going nuts about air conditioning on, on a GTV or in this case a GTA replica, you got to know a couple things. One, the motor that we're building for this is going to be probably one of the most powerful motors that's ever come out of our facility. It's going to be a, uh, a two liter Nord block, but we're putting a 155 head on it. And what that's going to do is, is we're expecting, according to our calculations, that we should somewhere and be, we, we're expecting somewhere in between a 220 to 230, maybe even 235 horsepower. We already have a blistering transmission going in this car to handle all that newfound power. We have a a bulletproof uh, limited slip in this car. This car is already immensely light, so the power to weight ratio of the thing is going to be un unbelievable. But what is more important to know about this is the air conditioning we're putting in this, we're doing it in a very discreet manner. Everything about this is going to be put away where you can't really see it. You're not even going to be able to see the compressor itself. These new compressors are about half the size of what would have been in a car like this back in the 70s. Now you got to think about where this car came from. This car did not start its life out as a step nose car. This is originally a 74 chassis, four headlight car that we not only converted into a step nose with the step nose hardware that needs to be mounted to the uh, front clip, but we also have all aluminum skins on this. Um, it has never been the intent of this car to be a clone to this to the sense of what a GTA is. It's always been a car that was being built to meet the customer's vision. And, and that's what we have to remind ourselves of. This car is meeting a particular person's vision. It's not meant to appease everybody. It's meant to appease the person who owns it, effectively the person who's writing the checks to build it. So um, reserve your comments and, and judgments and whatnot until you see this thing done. We have a lot of cool things going on with this one. And the air conditioning, you know what? For every one of you that are poo-pooing the idea of AC inside of a GTV, there's three times you, if they're going, that's a good idea. Especially when you see how cool this is. Not only will we be able to defrost the windows, and we will be able to cool the car and heat the car far more efficiently than it's ever been done before. And if you live in an adverse climate environment, this is a good way of keeping your car dry. So um, I applaud the idea of this. I'm looking forward to this build. We're going to get started. Um, this particular car is probably going to occupy a great deal of, of videos because um, this is kind of going off into uncharted waters. Because not only are we trying to put the AC in it, but we're trying to make it very discreet. We want it to be where you don't even notice it, which means that the, the lines that go to the air conditioner have to be routed in a very hidden way. Um, the heater slash air conditioning unit that goes inside the car needs to be tucked up really well behind the dash. But this car is also, it's got a lot of different things going on to it. Um, we put a synthetic suede dash in from a 69 instead of a, a you know, a normal uh, step no series dash. Um, there's lots of little things we're doing that, again, they're, they're the best of what the customer's visions are. He wants the, the 69 type like interior, but he wants the step nose exterior. He wants the power plant on a modern car, and he wants the drivability and the, uh, the overall experience in the modern car. That's why the suspension on this car is completely different. That's why. 
the power plant is completely outside the normal thinking. So, again, you know, it's all said and done. It's very cool. I like it. He likes it. Just about everybody comes in the shop and sees this car likes it. Um, it's definitely different. And more importantly, it's keeping yet another Alpha on the road. So it was a long-term commitment to build this car. And uh, here we are coming down to the home stretch. And I'm starting to really like some of the choices that are being made on this. Stay tuned.